All right, guys. Today we're gonna to be going over the differences between a Honda Rubicon and a Honda Foreman. Uh, you know, there's a lot of you that are maybe looking to buy a Foreman or a Rubicon, and so I'm just gonna kind of go over the differences and the pros and cons about what I like and what I dislike between the two. So obviously, a Foreman is a straight axle, and a Rubicon has independent rear suspension. Uh, on my Foreman, I have 27-inch Mega Mayhem tires. And on the Rubicon, I have 26 inch Sun F tires. So obviously these Mega Mayhems have some pretty big tread on them. And the tire is noticeably bigger than the Sun F tires. However, you can look between these two and see that the Rubicon still sits up higher. And the shock settings are the same on the Rubicon and the Foreman. So obviously, the Rubicon just sits up higher. It has more ground clearance because it doesn't have a straight axle in the back. So that's a big difference in the two if you're going through mud. But I will tell you that with the Foreman, I have never had an axle break in the rear. And I don't know if it's because there's no angles to them. It's just straight and they just don't break as easily. But I have had buddies that break them in the back. They're probably running bigger tires than me. And uh, they say it's a pain to have to replace those axles because obviously you have to do a lot more work than just popping an axle out of a independent rear suspension. And uh, another thing is the rod. This Foreman is so much more rough than the Rubicon. And I know it's got the big mud tires on it, so it's gonna be rough, but just that it, not having that independent rear suspension makes a big difference. Um, so, this Rubicon is an electric shift, and people say they've run into problems with electric shift. The only problem I have had is I had to clean my electrical connections on this Rubicon because this thing was getting stuck in gear, and I might make a video about that because I couldn't find anything online. I had to kind of figure that out myself, and this Foreman is a foot shift. So obviously they make Rubicons with a foot shift, and that's just preference, what you like. I like having the electric shift at the handlebars instead of having to use my foot, but I like them both. They're about the same. Um, for wheelies and stuff, I noticed that I'd rather have an electric shift than a foot shift, simply because, I don't know, I feel like in second gear on a foot shift, just it's more sluggish than second gear on the electric shift, but probably just the difference between the Foreman and the Rubicon, even though they're the same exact four-wheeler. Both of these are 2015s. So technically they are the same four-wheeler, just different models. And uh, the headlight on the Rubicon looks a little different than the Foreman's, looks a little better. Uh, you know, I really, if I'm picking a four-wheeler ride, I'm gonna ride my Rubicon every time. I really have the foreman for if I have buddies over or if I'm gonna go take it through the mud just because these Sun F tires, they do fine in the mud, but they're just, they're not like these Mega Mayhem tires. They don't have the tread, so they can't really keep up. And uh, both four-wheelers though, excellent four-wheelers. I used to have a player sportsman. You all can see that video. It's one of the first videos I ever made. It's a pretty bad video, but um, oh well. But uh, it had problems all the time. The parts were expensive. It broke axles. It did stuff constantly. I put so much money in that thing. I could just never keep it running. But with these things, they're easy to work on. I've never had a problem. I've had this one for a few years, and I have this Foreman, and I don't think it has ever been in the shop once. And I've had this Rubicon for about a year now, and I've never had any problems out of it besides that electric shift problem. And it was real simple. All I had to do was take some electrical cleaner and clean out some of the connections under the front rack. And after that, it's ran flawlessly. The parts are cheap, they're, they're easy to work on. And uh, all around, I mean, they're great four wheelers to own. And, you know, I know there's all these K&M guys and there's Honda guys, and it's kind of like a war between which one's better for taking them through the water and the mud and everything. and. I will say, these Hondas only have 27 horsepower. You know, I had a Sportsman 570, it had 44 horsepower, and I absolutely loved having that horsepower. You can jump up in wheelies, you can 
I mean, fly. Those things went like 65 miles an hour. These things will only go about 50. And I will say though, I would much rather have these Hondas than that Polaris simply because they're just easy to work on and they never give me any problems. They're always running. Even when something's wrong with them, you can still run them. They're just great four wheelers all around. So I am gonna be putting some headlights in this Rubicon. I don't know about the foreman yet, but we can go over some of the things I've done and I don't know, maybe that'll help you guys kind of decide what to do on y'alls. So for the winches, both of these winches are from Quad Boss. They're a cheap winch. They're one of the cheapest you can get, but I've never, I've had this one on for about three years. I've never had a problem out of it. I've had this winch on for probably six months and I haven't had a problem out of it either, but I haven't used it that much. So I'm sure there's better winches out there. They're 3,500 pound winches too. So they pull out these things out of mud pretty well. But uh, then I went with MSA 14 inch wheels and uh, Sun F tires. These Sun F tires are like 350 bucks. They're kind of a soft tire. I've been on a few rides on these and it, this tread's real soft, so they're kind of worn down. They're wearing, they wear out pretty fast, but I am hard on tires, spinning them on rocks and all kinds of stuff. But uh, you know, 350 bucks, I can pop a new set on and uh, Probably I could probably buy three sets of these for what big coins or something would cost. So that's nice. Um, put ammo boxes on. These things are fully waterproof, so you can put clothes in there, whatever you need to put in there, phones. And there's no way that water is getting in here. And then I have this quad ball backrest for when I have passengers with me. That folds up and. Uh, I've added this little piece of wood here because I have a Yeti soft top cooler that sits right there and I strap it down so I can run a cooler on here and uh, stay out all day. Another great thing about these Hondas, they have like two gallon gas tanks and they're real fuel efficient. So you can go ride all day on a tank of gas and then when you leave, you can fill one of these up for like $5 at the gas station. I mean, it's unbelievable. So, uh, you know, I know most all four wheelers have pretty small gas tanks, but to be able to fill up for five bucks and ride all day, I mean, that's pretty, that's pretty nice. So there's not all that much money in riding them and the maintenance on them is pretty cheap and you don't run into problems with Hondas. So they're a pretty great four wheeler just to own and not have problems with. So I'm sitting here noticing this. Another con about these Foremans, they have these drum brakes. And I know everybody knows about the drum brakes on Hondas, they are awful. I don't even think my back brakes work. I had a Foreman before this, it was a 2012, it was snorkeled, it was a mud machine. And I literally never had back brakes on it. They just don't work. When you get them fixed, they'll work for a few months and then they're done again. Uh, with these Rubicons, they have disc brakes and the disc brake is actually one disc brake on the drive shaft connecting to the differential and it works pretty well. They look pretty difficult to replace the brake pads if you have to do that. So I haven't ran into that yet, but that's probably not gonna be fun when I run into that. But the brakes on these Rubicons are so much better. And uh, I mean, overall, they're the same four wheeler Rubicon has more ground clearance. Rubicon has better brakes and the Rubicon rides a lot better. And so obviously if I was picking one of the two, I would pick the Rubicon over the Foreman. I know there's huge price differences between the two. So, you know, if I was on a budget, uh, the Foreman is still a great four wheeler and you don't have to run these big mud tires. You can run a cheaper tire and a smaller tire like the Sun F tire and it would probably ride a lot better. And you could just adjust your shock settings all the way down to the smoothest and it would ride a lot better and be fine but for me i can tell a huge difference in the suspension between the two uh however you know if you're used to a can-am or a polaris or something you're not going to have much travel so with a polaris you could park one tire up on a rock or a stump or something and your back two tires will be, still be on the ground well on this rubicon if you pull up on a big stump or something with your front tire, it's still gonna do that teeter-totter just like a straight axle would. So you don't have much travel. It's just more comfortable. It's a more comfortable ride on the Rubicon, but you still can't flex and 
you're still more likely to flip. Both of these four-wheelers, I feel like they flip a little easier than other four-wheelers just because they don't have that travel and they can't flex out and they're just, they're easily, you can roll them pretty easily. So and that's kind of a con between the Hondas and obviously the horsepower, you don't have much horsepower, but without that horsepower, man, I mean, you're not breaking axles, you're not doing stupid stuff. If you just want a four-wheeler to ride and ride on trails and even mud rod i mean these are the best four wheelers in water they run i mean you can sink one of these and drain the water out of the muffler and keep going no problems so they're just great four wheelers to own obviously the foremans are cheaper than the rubicons they want a lot of money for these rubicons but these are both 2015s i think a few years ago, I paid five grand for this foreman, and then last year I paid about 52 for this Rubicon. So, obviously they're five years old. They still look pretty brand new. I take care of them, but I mean, there's really no differences between these and the 2020s. I think the 2020s have a slightly bigger engine. It's like a 520 instead of a 500 or something like that. But uh, overall, these Hondas are both are great options. If you're looking for a little cheaper option, you can get a Foreman, but you are gonna lose a better ride. And uh, I mean, that's about it, ground clearance. And obviously the drum brakes are a big problem. You're probably always gonna have trouble with your back brakes, but that's about it. Other than that, they're about the same. And uh, the electric shift and foot shift, that's up to you as well. I mean, people say they run into issues with the electric shift. I really haven't yet. And the foot shift obviously is always gonna be solid. You're never really gonna run into problems with that. And uh, another good tip for you guys is I put a zip tie around my parking brake here that I could easily slip off if I need to, to put the parking brake on. But uh, this allows me when I'm in neutral, I can just pull my handbrake and shift directly into reverse instead of having to pull this lever that kind of gets annoying but uh that's a little solution to that but yeah great four wheelers foreman's a little cheaper it has its issues with the the smoothness of the ride and the brakes but really that's about it but uh i love my rubicon it's been my favorite four wheeler i've, I've owned so far and uh if y'all have any questions or want to see anything or know anything about what I've done, you can just message me and I will get back to y'all. But uh, yeah, I love these Hondas and I probably wouldn't recommend anything else.